Yo, what's up, everybody? It's PT. I need you to do two things. Number one, thank God that you're able to hear the word one more time. Number two, I need you to pound that share button, all right? Let's not be greedy. Let's share with the world what we're about to get tonight. If you're excited, I need you to hit them thongs, them little buttons, and mainly that share button so we can get this message out to the world. Why? Because we are purpose driven, baby. Good afternoon. I am Pastor Fred, and you are joining us tonight for our PT service, which is purpose training. All right? We're going to have a good time tonight. I know y'all looking at these chairs and you don't see my beautiful companion, but I got something in store for you tonight. I'm excited about it. Let me speak right quick. Hey, Kim. El Brazil, how you doing? Who else we got on here? Sister Murray, how you doing? Yeah, we up in here. What time we got? Listen. I'm excited. I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. I want to introduce to you all tonight, for those that you don't know, those that do know, I want to bring to your attention, to your spirit tonight, Minister Jerome and Sister Don Godwin. They're going to be teaching us tonight. Come on, wherever you at, put your hands together. Show me some love. Show them some love as we get ready to get our service on tonight. Afternoon. All right, good afternoon. We are the Godwins from Church of Purpose. <laughs> this is my lovely wife. Hey everyone. Hey, don't you look good? <laughs> she look good on. She look nervous. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. But everything is gonna work itself out. But um we are here tonight and we're gonna be sharing with you. But before we um actually go into that, um we'd like to open up with just a uh, prayer. Everybody Bali here. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you um, today, this afternoon, and we just give you glory, give you honor. Father God, I always say that I love you. Um, we love you. We honor you. We bless you. And Father God, we just want to say thank you for bringing Jesus down and dying on the cross, shedding his precious blood, that we might have life everlasting, have it more abundantly. Yeah. And Father God, um, this afternoon, every word that we speak, that you give us, I let it fall on good ground. Yes. Let it take root. Let it go deep. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And Father God, you ask that you just remove us and let us be your vessels this afternoon and say everything that you have us to say. Yes. And we just love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I was saying, this is my wife. I already said that once before, but she just looks so good. But um, yeah, she does. But uh, we're getting ready to share the fruits of the Spirit. And what we have to share with you tonight is dealing with meekness. All right, all right. Dealing with meekness. And we both came up and, and started studying it. And then we, we did it separately. And then we came together. And both of them is de dealing with meekness. But um, hers is a little different than mine. But um, we're going to share it and see how this thing goes. You ready? All right. All right. Okay, all right. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, like you said, we, we started this separately, studying on our own, and then when we brought it together, we wanted it to kind of blend and flow, and sometimes when you expect one thing, it doesn't always turn out how you thought it would. So we felt it would be best that each one of us would just share what God did on our hearts, and then hopefully you'll be able to receive from it. So I told him I wanted to start and get, you know, get mine over with, but... Um, <laughs> Pastor wanted us to speak on meekness as it relates to the field, the tree, and the earth, or in that order, the tree, the field, and then the earth. Um, what God laid on my heart is that you need to be careful as the body of Christ 
not to waste his fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, um, if I put it in natural terms, if I were in a field and it was an apple tree and a fig tree, I'm going to eat the apple trees. You know, I'm going to eat the apples off the tree all day long because mm -hmm. apples are good to me. They taste good. They look nice. And that's just what my preference is. Mm -hmm. But if there was a fig tree, I don't like figs. And, and I don't know if you like figs, that's, that's you. But figs to me are nasty. I don't really like them. I don't even think Jesus liked figs because he cursed that fig tree back in the day. <laughs> but um, the fig tree, we all know that if no one ever picks that fruit off the fig tree, the fruit will eventually fall to the ground. And we know that when the fruit falls to the ground, what does it do? It rots. It rots you know? And it becomes a wasted fruit. Mm. So even though I don't like figs, I, it, just because something doesn't taste good or that you don't really um, like it, it doesn't mean that it's not good for you. Wow. That's what may good. not be good to you may be good for you. Come and what, what I found out about figs is that they have a lot of nutritional value. Um, fizz can increase bone density. Fizz can help diabetics. I know you're diabetic and it could help you. Hey, you will be sharing all that. Uh, <laughs> well, talking about I'm diabetic and all that. You know? Knowledge is power. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it can help you, but because I didn't like how it tastes and because I didn't like how it um, looks on that tree, I wasted it. Mm. And I lost all the it, I lost the nutritional value that it could have given to me. Mm -hmm. So um, God says, be careful not to waste His fruit. Mm -hmm. Meekness, we know we're talking about the fruits of the spirit, and meekness is one of those fruits that if you're not careful, mm. you can waste it. Wow! Because most people associate meekness with weakness. Yeah. All right. Um, if I were to tell you that you're so meek. How would you receive that? It depends on how you say it. It depends on your tone. <laughs> he he wouldn't receive it well. Depends on your tone. <laughs> He's one of those alpha males, and it's like meekness is one of those things you don't want to be associated with because a lot of people miss they confuse it with weakness. And um, what what God was telling me is that He gave us this fruit of the Spirit called meekness for a reason. It has nutritional value. It has mm. things in it that we need as the body of Christ mm. in order to advance the kingdom. That's good. Mm. So it's very important that you do not waste the fruit that God has given you, especially meekness, just because it can be associated with um, weakness. In the Bible, it does say, blessed are the meek mm. because they shall inherit the earth. If he's going to let us inherit the whole earth, and that means meekness has some value. It has yeah. something in it that we need. That's good. So my whole purpose tonight um, with what God had given me is that we don't need to look at meekness as a sign of weakness. We need to look at it as the way God intended for it to be. Mm -hmm. So I did some research and I found eight ways that meekness um, is in fact a strength and not a weakness. So the first way meekness is a strength is that the meek have self-control. Why, why is it important to have self-control? Um, it's important to have self-control because you actually, if you have self-control, that means you're controlling yourself. But if you don't have self-control, that means somebody else is controlling you. Wow. So um, I, that's what I tell my kids a lot in the classroom. Um, sometimes when they get upset, or they might get ready to fight or and they do certain things and they say, well, he made me do it. The reason I did that because he made me do it. He made me mad. He made me angry. So if somebody can make you mad and make you angry, that means you're not in control of yourself. That means they're in control of you because they have got a rise out of you mm -hmm. right then. So when you say self-control, you have to be disciplined, but not only be disciplined, but you got to make sure that I'm not going to let that person push my buttons. Okay. Um, just the other, what, uh, about two days ago, I have a classmate and um, my dad, I was on the phone with my dad and he was like, hey, do you remember so-and-so? And I was like, yeah. He's like, man, he just killed somebody. And I was like, what, him? 
in school and stuff, he was so um, mild. Um, but every now and then, he was a little hot hit. But how things went down, he actually went and shot someone because they made him mad. Wow. But not only did they make him mad, um, he was trying to do the right thing. He was going to see his kids. And then it got to the point where they started arguing and he jumped on the female, which never do. And another male jumped in and he just pulled his gun out and shot the male and then shot um, his, um, the, the, and, and he then shot the woman. And then he went home and then turned himself in. You know, at that moment right there, it's very, very reassuring to me that I need self-control because anything can happen just like that. Mm -hmm. Just and like that. The opposite of self-control is out of control. Yeah. And, and while you're in the church, it's very important that as a church, we maintain self-control because the opposite of that is being totally out of control. And you can't reach near as many people as God would design for you to reach had you had self-control. So the first thing that shows meekness is a strength is you must have self-control. Number two, the meek are humble and teachable. Um, that's not a skill that everybody has. It's something that people have to work towards. Are you humble? Are you able to be taught? Or are you always the one that has to do the teaching? Um, if you always have to be in front and you always have to do the teaching, then you're not showing meekness. God has designed for his people to be taught. If, if you knew everything you were supposed to know, you wouldn't have to sit in this congregation. Right. But past, he put pastor over us to teach us and to show us the way. And in return, as that tree, we can go out and we can teach others. So That's you good. have to be That's humble good. and you have to be teachable. The third point. The hey, wait, 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 wait. Now, I know you're on a roll now. But... Um, <laughs> When she said when she said that right there, a lot of times with males, that's hard for us to do because hey, they we, yeah, it's hard for us to do. Okay, so a lot of times when you look in the church, um, a lot of times you see more females than you do males because we really don't want anybody, another male, to tell us what to do or how we should do or how we should live. But my friend that I grew up with, if he had somebody that was telling him what to do. When, and all that kind of stuff. When he got in that situation, things might have turned out different. So yes, we do need to sit under someone, but it's hard. It's hard. Sometimes you have to swallow that that pride thing, because when I was studying in mind, it said pride is the opponent of mm. meekness. Yeah. Yeah. It's the opponent. It's the opponent. They war it. They war it with each other. They war it with each other. So yeah. We have to send them under somebody. That's a great point. You know, very good. Number three, the meek are bold. And bold does not always mean that you go before God and you make your petitions known. It doesn't always come on the side that I know what I want, I'm going to go get what I want. Bold can even be being bold enough to shut down the enemy, shut down mm. the words of the enemy. Um, if this, if Satan keeps whispering in your ear, he can he can even use a person. Mm -hmm. he, he can come through a person. If that person is whispering in your ear, you've got to be bold enough to say, no, that's not what the Bible says, or no, I will not get in discord with anyone. Teach. Because Teach. being bold is not always telling God what you want and doing it with expectancy. Sometimes being bold means shutting down the the words words and the works of the enemy even if a doctor gave you a bad report you can stand boldly in his office and say okay i hear what you're saying doctor but my god says i am healed yeah. you know my yeah. god says i am free yeah. so being bold um is a definite sign of meekness hey um was jesus bold when he, he was meek but he was also bold when um satan came up to tempt him he spoke with boldness, okay, and that, when she said that, that's what I was getting out of it, he was bold, okay, um, but he was meek at the same time, and he used the words, he used the words to fight Satan, but um, not only that, when Jesus, he was a man's man, Yeah. a lot of times we think um, Jesus not being a man's man, it's a, oh yeah, he's meek, um, he's humble, oh he's gentle, and gentle and all that, 
but he was a man's man. Because how we know that? Because men followed him. That's right. That's right. Men followed him. So therefore, we know that he was a man's man. That's right. And yeah, he was bold. When it was time for him to be bold, he was bold. He was bold when he uh, told Satan, "Hey, get behind me, Satan." That's right. But he also was bold when he went in the temple. That's right. He went in the temple and he ran him out of there. But hey, wait a minute. But he was bold. He's a man's man. You know, he was a man's man. So, yeah, boldness and, and, and you have a meekness. That's what God would have us to do as Christians. You know, we have to be bold and also gentle and meek in everything that we need to do. Number four, it says the meek can forgive. Um, that's that's a hard thing for some people to do. In Matthew 5, 44, it says, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you. That's that's easier said than done. Yeah. Amen, amen. <laughs> and I think that's just part of the human characteristics. Being able to forgive takes some strength, especially if someone has hurt you to the point where you, there's no forgiveness. Um, God has designed it that we as a people forgive each other. Yeah. Think about being in a church that's full of forgiving people. Yeah. I mean, anyone would want to come. Anyone yeah. would want to come in because they know I can come in just as I am. Yeah. And I know that these people will accept me for who I am, the yeah. way I am, yeah. because this is a forgiving church. Yeah. If you're not operating in forgiveness, it'll be just the opposite. Yeah. Um, people won't want to come because they won't feel like they can be who they are, who God designed for them to be. So forgiveness is definitely... Um, something that everyone needs to work on. Something that goes right hand in hand is with that is number five. The meek can also say, I am sorry. Yeah. Um, just for an example, I, I went out of town last week and um, my son had baseball. I got off work, came, did my little stuff at the church, and then I we packed, got down to Lake City by 10 o'clock. Woke up Saturday morning, played baseball all day. Y'all know how the baseball thing goes. Then woke up Sunday morning, played baseball all day. On the way home, I thought, man, I forgot to count money. It was my Sunday to count. So I immediately texted to Sadie, and I said, Sadie, I am sorry. I said, I dropped the ball. I heard a pastor say not too long ago, the enemy destroys relationships one offense at a time. Wow. And if you do not address those offenses relationships are constantly destroyed so even with even with sister um when i text sister sadie and i said sadie i'm sorry i forgot i dropped the ball i just told her i was sorry it, it really wasn't that big of a deal but what if sadie had something to do and she had to drop what she was doing because i dropped the ball sadie immediately she said girl there's no problem i have nothing to do but I could have easily just said, okay, well, Sadie, she'll be all right. And then the next time that same thing could have happened, she'll be all right. And she might would have been. But after three or four times, the enemy destroys those relationships one offense at a time. If you don't address those things and say, I'm sorry, then relationships are destroyed before your very eyes. And as a church, we have to make sure that we say, I'm sorry. We have to make sure that we walk in forgiveness. Yeah. So um, that was point number five. And then there are three more. The meek are confident. I don't really have to explain that. Confidence. You want to talk about confidence? I guess I could. Okay. She kind of told me, put me on the spot. But um, when you are confident, um, actually, um, confidence is, is when you reassure of yourself. You know, it's like, I'm okay. You know, you're reassured. Um, I was actually telling my kids today in class and a topic came up and I was looking at it and this psychologist, he was saying like, um, most time, most people that re that's real confident, they, they have a little bit more of this chemical in their system, okay? And this chemical, what they call it, they call it testosterone, okay? They're territorial and they're leaders and they are confident. They're confident, and you say you can you can know who they are sometimes by the way they sit. Okay, so yeah, you sit like this right here. 
I'm sitting back, I'm confident. You know, I'm letting everybody know. But dealing with God and dealing with confidence and stuff with the word, God didn't have to sit a different way. It was always it's all in him. It was all in him. He didn't have to like project this and this right here. When he walked on the scene, everybody knew that he was confident. Right. Everybody knew it. Okay. He didn't have to like go through and say, I'm this, show this, I'm this. Look at my I'm sticking out this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. He didn't have to do that. It was already in him. When he came on the scene, they already knew. Even the enemy knew. It was it's one uh, scripture in there in the Bible when Jesus came on the scene. The demons even talked to him and said, hey, wait a minute. It ain't time yet. They already knew. Yeah. So um, that's how we have to be. They should be afraid of us. We should when we when we come into a, a situation when we have to pray for someone yeah. and we have to deliver people. We should do it with confidence. Yeah. We should do it with confidence, not scared. OK, because we we have access to the father. We have access to the Father. That's right. So dealing with confidence, that's what we have to do. You know, we just have to make sure that we are confident. And the way we do that is by make sure that we are in God's word. That's right. Yeah. Word. We, we as a church, I say COP is a very confident church. Um, we might be small in number, but we are mighty when it comes yeah. to ministering that word. And we're not small in us. We're not small in number. Speak, <laughs> we, we're speaking prophetically now. We're not yeah. small in number. Well, people see us and, and they, they see our confidence. People are attracted to confidence. And and that's why the parking lot was full on Sunday, because they see the confidence that we have. All the things that we do as a church is, is just something that people are drawn to. So yeah. confidence, the meek are confident. Um, there's two more points. The meeks can serve others. If you, if you are a part of a church and you're not serving in that church, then you need to make sure you work on your meekness because yeah. a church cannot function unless everybody does their part. That's good. A church cannot grow unless everybody is going out and getting the members. So you must serve in order to be meek. Like and the final thing that I had was that the meek have the spirit with them. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing weak about the spirit. Um, I don't know about you, but I want to walk with the spirit all the days of my life because that's what that's what keeps me going. That's what wakes me up. That's what motivates me every single day is having the spirit with me. Um, so those are just the things that God laid on my heart. Be careful not to waste his fruit because his fruit provides everything that we need. If we as a church or as individuals, that tree, if every single tree planted in the church of purpose was able to master these eight uh, things, imagine what yeah. we could do in the community of yeah. Elton. Yeah. And, and the, as we go out into the community, imagine if the community catches on to those eight yeah. things, yeah. we'd have all the tools we need That's to good. impact the earth. Um, the last thing I wanted to share was that Meekness is a sign of weakness for weak-minded people. Oh, wow. um, weakness, again, is a sign. Meekness is a sign of weakness for weak-minded people. So if you, from this day on, associate meekness with being weak, you need to make sure that you pray. Read that Bible and understand what God has designed for meekness to be. All right. So, um. My section um, dealing with meekness, um, I wanted to start with a title. Um, and my title is, is, Can I Get a Rise Out of You? Mm -hmm. Can I Get a Rise Out of You? Um, when you're dealing with, with that, um, we can easily go and say, well, what does that have to do with meekness? Um, you're talking about being gentle. You're talking about being humble. What do, can I get a rise out of you? If that's my title, um, has to do with meekness. And I looked at a definition, the definition that I found uh, for meekness, it says it's a personality trait um, of gentleness and humility. And then it goes on and it says it's a control power. Meekness is a type of power, but it's control. It's a control power. Um, and it's also the opposite of pride. Meekness and pride, they war at each other. It's the opposite. Um, the pride is the rebellion against God because it attributes the self 
and the honor that glory due to God alone. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that one more time. It's, meekness is a personality trait of gentleness and humble and, and humility. Uh, it's a control power. That's what meekness is. This is control power. And looking at, um, if you have, you know, you have your Bibles open or your phones, uh, one scripture that I found is in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 22, verse 36. And I read that, and I'm dealing with meekness, and I read that, and I had to read it a few times. The first time I read it, well, I'm going to read it first. It says, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy help makes me great he said my that help makes me great and when i read that i was like oh, what does that have to really do um with meekness so i tried to go through and, and find another scripture that was actually almost identical to that and hey, i found it and it's, it's it's in psalms chapter 18 verse 35 and this is what it says it says, thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. Almost the same thing. And then it goes in and it says, and thy right hand. Yeah. It says, that right hand upholds me yeah. and thy gentleness makes me great. Yeah. So I said, okay. So now I do, I understand what Samuel was saying. Because uh, some, they just put, just put it right out there for me. Because yeah. it says, thy salvation, it says, thy right hand upholds me and thy gentleness makes me great so it's a david wrote songs so you already know what all everything that david was going through he was struggling he was being chased he was doing all this right here and then he goes in and said man wait a minute he said god is holding me up and when he holds me up that's his gentleness is making me great yeah. so we have a loving um, gentle God That's right. and whenever we going through and we feel like we can't get through God said wait a minute Yeah, I got you I can hold you up Yeah, I can hold you up and I'm going to do it with loving kindness yeah. and gentleness Yeah, that's that's our God Yeah, that's the God that we serve so when we going through we know that God can hold us up and he mm -hmm. will hold us up as long as we definitely is in this word right here right. Okay, that's where you have all your evidence right here. You have your evidence. Yeah. But not only do you have your evidence right here, is when you come in on Sunday morning and you have Tuesday yeah. when pastor is preaching and then he's preaching from the word yeah. and he's preaching from the word and when he's preaching from the word, he gets to the point where, wait a minute, everything that I'm reading, yeah. everything he's telling me is in, in here mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I can go and I can project and, and it feels good. Yeah. So we definitely have to make sure that we are in the church being up under a pastor, like you said earlier, because we definitely have to learn. We definitely have to learn from a man of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I do have a few uh, scriptures. And another one that uh, we've gone through is Matthew. You can turn there with me. Uh, Matthew chapter 11. I already got mine typed out, so... And it's verse 29. Verse 29. And what it says, it says, take my yoke upon you yeah. and learn from me. Right. right there is already going back what my wife was saying. He's saying, hey, learn, yeah. learn, learn how to be me. Yeah. So it says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then it goes, says, for I am, I'm gentle. There we go again. Our God is loving. He's gentle. Yeah. He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Yeah. And it says, and you shall find rest for your souls. For he says, my yoke is easy and my load is light. That's good. So, man, I, when I read that, I was like, man, we have to learn. It's a mindset. Yeah. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a, it's a mindset where we, we need to learn how to be meek. Mm -hmm. Even though I believe it's, it's already inherently in us. Yeah. It's in us because when when I when we had our first child, Jariah, and like you're saying, I'm like, I just got off the football field. I ain't been off the football field for about like two years. And from college, and you know, back then I was big and you know, all this stuff. 
And I saw that little baby, and I felt like I can just hold her in one hand like this. And at first, when the nurse wanted me to hold her, I was like, oh, no, I feel yeah. like. I feel like I can probably break her. Yeah. I might break her if I like, you know, do this right here. And she just said I was scared. <laughs> but um, I probably was a little scared. <laughs> but when I got her and they placed her in my own arms and they did it so gently, and I said, okay. And then I, I held her for that first time and I didn't break her and I held her gently. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's already in us. Yeah. It's in us, but we have to learn for to use it. That's we right. have to use it. I think once you've been on the receiving end of gentleness, it, it makes it easier for you to be gentle. And what I mean by that is I can remember, I played sports too. I was pretty athletic back in the day. But I can remember my dad went to all of my games and he was tough. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't do what I was supposed to do with basketball, he was tough on me. And I knew that it would be a long ride home. <laughs> Blake can relate. <laughs> but my dad, he just wanted what was best for me. But it got to a point, I think I was so down after one particular game. And I knew my dad was going to be disappointed. But he saw what I was feeling. And he was gentle. Wow. He, didn't, he didn't get on to me. I know he wanted to. He didn't get on to me. He hugged me and he said, you did your best. And I think being on that end, that side of gentleness, it, it allows me to be gentle, you know, with, with the children, with my own children. The fact that he didn't ride me all the way to the house, he, yeah. he, he understood, he could see it in my eyes that I was frustrated. And sometimes you don't have to be so hard on somebody because they hard on themselves already. Yeah. And, and I just thank God for that, that he realized that and he realized that it wasn't the time for him to be tough. It was a time for him to just love on his baby. And I can appreciate him for that to this day. Mm -hmm. hey, um, that brought back a, um, something that me and Blake just actually went through. Uh, Blake is in a hidden slump. I'm talking about last year he didn't strike out hardly, maybe like two, three times in the whole season. Mm -hmm. Now he's every time he get up there, he strike it out. Striking out, striking out. I'm like, what is going on? And when he comes back from the plate and he don't struck out, I'm looking at him like he's right here. And we make an eye contact. And I'm just shaking my head like, what in the world are you doing? And I just drop my head like right here. And he goes in the dugout. And every time he do that, he losing his confidence. Wow. Every single time. Every single time. And I noticed that while we were studying, that's why it's very important to be in the word of God. I noticed that God brought it back up in me, you know, and the other day we was working out and I, I had apologized to him. I apologized to him. And that let me know there is like, well, man, this word is getting in. Wow. It is getting in. So while we was working out, I told Blake, I was like, Blake, I said, um, I owe you an apology. I said, every time you struck out, instead of me encouraging you, I said, when he was coming back, you was looking for my approval. And I just dropped my head. Oh, wow. And I just shook and dropped my head. That made you lose some more confidence. You got back up, then you struck out again. So I apologized to him. So even though we've grown men, and it's hard to follow, it's hard to follow men sometimes, and all that kind of, it's hard for us to apologize. But this word, this word right here, it'll get in your spirit. And then to correct you, yeah. and you will apologize. You yeah. will do the right thing. So, I, yeah, I apologize to my son. I told him, I said, well, we ain't going to work on here. I said, we're just going to do individual workout. And I said, I owe you an apology. I said, the next time you get up there, I said, if you hit the ball, great. I said, if you don't hit it, I said, I'm going to look you right in your eye. I'm going to say, you're going to get it next time. Yeah, You're going to get it next time. So, yeah. But you heard saying that. I just brought that back. And I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, my son, he's sitting right there, and he can tell you that I apologized to you the other day. Amen. You know I did, you know? So that's what we have to do, okay? We have to be gentle, be like Jesus. That's right. Be like Jesus. And that brings me um, all the way down uh, when, when he was in the garden. When Jesus was in the garden, he was getting ready to go to the cross. Yeah. 
And he got there and, and he had the disciples there and he told them to keep watch. And then he brought a few of them with him and told them to, he had the disciples and he went further. And he told them to stay and, and watch. And he went and prayed. When he went and prayed, he came back and he looked at the disciples and he looked and he saw that they were asleep. Yeah. He said they were they were asleep. In the word, it doesn't say that he got angry. He didn't say that he blessed, blessed them out and, and did all that kind of stuff. He didn't, it, it didn't say that. And then he went back and he prayed again. When he came back, he said, yeah, sleep. And then where he, where he goes and what he tells them, he says, your spirit is willing. He said, but your flesh is weak. Yeah. To me right there, he was already exhibiting and teaching them humbleness yeah. and teaching them gentleness on how you handle people. Okay. And I read, I was like, whoa. Mm. The whole time Jesus is dealing with the disciples, he's teaching them. That's right. He's trying to get them the mindset that, hey, everything that I'm teaching you right now, you have to deal with the people like that. You have to look beyond. You look beyond the flesh. Look beyond the flesh and look at their spirit. He knew their spirit was right. He knew their spirit was right. And, 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 and that's where we have to deal with the people like they're right here. We got to look beyond the flesh and look at the spirit. Yeah. You have to look at the spirit. That's good. Because um, when I was looking at it, and even though I'm dealing with the this title, this title, can I get a rise out of you? It seemed like Jesus could have got angry right there and could have just, like, yeah. but he did. He could have snapped, but he didn't. Okay, so yeah, he was dealing with meekness. And if you go even even further, uh, this is what Dr. King said. <laughs> We can't some can I get a rise out of you? This is what Dr. King said. And this is what I used to believe. I said, if somebody hit me, I'm gonna hit them back. I know, but back in the day, not too long ago, somebody said, I'm gonna do this to you. I said, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep we're gonna keep doing it until I get the best of you. You know, that and that's just my character, you know. But I know that I got something else in there that I mean now I need to turn to others. Cheap. But this is what Dr. King says. He said it's the old law. He said it's old law and eye for an eye. That's what I used to believe. He said it's old law, eye for eye, two for two. And then he says, if we everybody do that, he said everybody walk around blind and toothless. For real. You know, so somebody got to be able to see. And somebody got to be able to talk. Somebody has to be able to forgive. Somebody got to be able to say, I'm sorry. Right. Somebody got to be able to do that. So why can't it be the church? Yeah. If we taking this to the masses, why can't it be us knowing how to forgive, knowing how to apologize, knowing how to show gentleness so we can do all this kind of stuff. And then we the only thing we're doing is being authentic because it's in us. And if everybody see that we're authentic and then they'll be drawn to yeah. us, just like it was drawn to, drawn to Jesus. That's right. Amen. 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 Well, that's what we have for tonight. Um, and, and just to, to reiterate what Pastor has been preaching all month long, if we as the church, individuals in the church, that tree, if we all can master the art of me, we can reach out into the community and yeah. we can, as a church and as a body of Christ, all the churches together, we can impact the world. That's so right. meekness is definitely right. a fruit of the spirit that does not need to be wasted. Mm. Right. Good. Good. Don't need to be wasted at all. That's right. That's good stuff. Like we're saying, we are the godless from the church of purpose. But uh, right now, what we're getting ready to do, we're getting ready to do take up the offering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We hope that you were able to take something away from yes. this. Oh. It was my first time we've done this before, but we just pray that something Amen. today yes. can stick and that you'll be able to grow from it. Amen. 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 While we're waiting for the offering, I know Pastor wanted us to announce that tomorrow night is children's ministry, so make sure you log into Zoom. Get with Sister Sadie on Zoom. The children... Um, are ages 2 to 12, I believe. And then on Thursday night, we will have the youth ministry ages 13 to 17. Both of those are at 6 p.m. 
but make sure you um, tune your children in to learn on their level. Yeah. Also, if you are looking to join, um, go to our church Facebook page, um, Church of Purpose, or you can email at impurpose2 at gmail.com. Just let us know if you want to become members of Church of Purpose, and we will definitely be in touch with you. Yeah. Okay, with the offering, we have multiple ways that we can give. And if you're right here in the sanctuary, you already know that you can do the old school, which is definitely with cash, <laughs> and with check. That's what I use most. I use the check. But um, people online, what you can do, you can do, you do the cash app, dollar sign, COP for you, because we are here for you. Always. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go ahead and pray over the altar. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you honor. Once again, we love you. We magnify you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for that blood that you shed on the cross. It covers everything. And Father God, we want to thank you for the word tonight that it came out plain and fell on good ground. Yeah. And we just want to just let you know that we honor you. We thank you for the word that you left behind. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and the direction that you left behind. We thank you for pastors, churches. Father God, we ask that you continue to, to strengthen them in every area that they need. And Father God, the offering that we have taken up this afternoon, Father God, we ask that you breathe on them and just let it grow. In the name of Jesus, amen. This right here is, is the conclusion of the service. But here at Church of Purpose, we want to let you know that we are real people. Yeah. With real life and real world. Yeah. And also in purpose, on purpose, and for purpose. Hey, and we are here at Church of Purpose for you. Yeah. And we love you. And we just want to say that, hey, this church is on the ride. Come on, man. Good night. Good night.